Yo, what is up, guys? Today, I got you the best ADC in NA with a game-breaking build, it seems like. Uh, I've never seen this build before. He gave me this build. This is it. And I got two gameplays for you guys. So first of all, we're going to watch this one. And this is going to be Gume. In case you do not know who Gume is. You guys know I talk about starting all over and Le Mont, right? Um, Gume is on the same level, I would say. And that is basically another level. So when this guy sends this Ash build to me, and he tells me like, yeah, I got a new Ash build, and it's completely different from what anyone is building, I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to watch, and I'm going to show you guys too. Again, I have two gameplays for you guys. I am honestly curious how he plays Ash, because as you guys may know, I really don't think Ash is very strong. I do think Ash has her strengths, but in general, I would say Ash is kind of weak. It's just really not that strong of an ADC. You know, she has good range, she has good CC, but that's really it. And as you can see, he's not using lethal tempo, which is something, you know, most Ash players are using. He uses Kraken Slayer. And I'm going to assume the way he plays around the Kraken Slayer is in the early stages of the game. He's going to do, you know, basic attack first ability and then another attack. Because first ability, yeah, 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 just like that. So basic attack first ability, and then he's going to try to hit another one. And I believe with that, he'll do a lot of burst damage early game, which allows him to truly snowball the lane. And then I suppose he wants to get to the late game, which is where this build gets strong. I don't know. I'm watching with you guys, you know. For me, this is this is, this is is the same as Rick. I flash kill, there we go. Of course he's going to get that, right? I, I basically talk about the optimal thing to do. I am re-watching the gameplay, you know, I'm not playing it live. And of course, he does the exact thing that I'm talking about. Of course he does. Let me actually check if my camera is correct. You're gonna see a black screen. Yes, everything is good. So let's keep watching this video. Uh, by the way, giving away two skins on the main channel. All you have to do is put down a comment under the video. Two more skins on the side channel, the Hell's Devil Plus channel. Also, links to Gume are going to be in the description. He streams on Twitch. Um, if I'll check out his YouTube. If he uploads on YouTube too, I'll uh, put his YouTube in the description too. Definitely check him out. Top tier ADC content. Th this is the best ADC you'll like. You'll watch. Unfortunately, the NZO stopped making videos. So. I think Gume, Gume and Hanuari, Hanuari is a creator, but I believe he speaks Spanish, are the only good ADC content creators in the game. Good as in they're actually good at the game. At least as far as I know. I, I do not know of any... Am I missing someone very obvious now? No. So th this guy is the best. Like, check him out if you want ADC content. He streams. He doesn't stream very often, but he does stream. So the only good thing about Ash, in my opinion, is the slowing, the CC. Her ultimate gives great CC, and you need to be able to gank lanes with it as well. I do not want you guys to stick to the same lane with that ultimate. You need to be ganking other lanes, as well as, you know, ganking your own lane with it. Look at how he goes back, by the way. It's like the small things that matter. He goes back and he freezes the wave. What the hell did he just do? He cancelled his back? That, that had to be a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake. He misclicked. So he went back, froze the lane, and now goes back to his lane. This will make the enemy lose an entire wave. Um, as you can see, Varus came back to the lane, but he's going to be behind. He's level 4. Look, Varus is level 4. He's immediately capitalizing on it. Look at that. Look at that. Immediate capitalization. He doesn't care. He just ults. He knows that enemy Varus is level 4. Varus has no ult. And he just capitalizes on it. And instead of freezing now, he's actually shoving the wave. Because now Varus is dead, he can make him lose farm by shoving the wave. This is optimal gameplay. This is absolute optimal ADC gameplay. He's gonna shove the wave now. I know Varus is coming. Ooh, now he needs to run away though. He has flash, so he should be fine. Nami is dead, but he should be okay. No way they kill him. There's no way. Okay, they try okay, never mind. Lucian is here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Nah. Wow. He's he's positioning himself so well. He's he's how do you call it? It's called not distancing. Well, it's similar to distance. Like he's maintaining just enough distance to not take damage from the enemy, but to be able to do damage himself. Because Ash has one of the longest ranges in the game. So 
his distancing is very, very good and is allowing him to just do as much damage as he's doing now. And then in combination with his build, right, he has a Brutal, which gives a lot of early game damage, and he has the Kraken Slayer. It's all meant for early game. This is extremely interesting to watch this, because I know a lot of people are focused on later game with Ash, right? They go for the Ruman's Hurricane build and all of that. You know what I would do as an Ash right here? I would ult Lucian. That's me personally. Uh, well, actually, Lucian is not showing himself anymore, so of course I wouldn't actually do it. But that, that would have been on my mind, ulting the Lucian. Oh my god, this Varus cannot play the game. He actually cannot play the game. Yeah, I would definitely ult Lucian. Okay, okay, he does it too. He actually missed. Okay, you know, I don't, you know, you may think I'm not qualified enough to talk about his mistakes, but I coach a lot of people in Wild Rift. I've also coached challenger players. He's sovereign, by the way. Oh, Varus stole it. Oh, Varus stole it. But I'm definitely qualified to talk about the mistake. So he made a mistake by not ulting the Lucian early enough. I'm sure he knows it as well. But he should have ulted Lucian a whole lot earlier. Because Akali was fighting Lucian. And then only when the fight ended, he, he, he ulted the Lucian. I think even if he hit the ult, maybe he would not have even killed the Lucian. It was just way too late of an ult. And here, again, perfect positioning. Look at him. He attacks and moves. Attacks and moves. And while it doesn't increase his actual damage output, like Vainglory... His attacking and moving pattern is allowing him to get in the danger and get out. He's only in the danger for the basic attack. He doesn't stay under the turret. He doesn't let the enemy to just go on him. And then he does this, it's really funny. But it's, it's these small little things that differentiate a player between being really good and being the best, which is what Gume is. So there we go. Bloodthirster. Trinity Force, of course, paying attention to the fight, moving that camera. This is something I preach a lot about during my coaching sessions. Um, by the way, if you do want to get coached by me, make sure you message me on Discord for more information. And you can see Gume does it perfectly. I'm not talking out of my ass. This is exactly what the pro players are doing. Again, he checks Renekton. I knew he would check him because he has to. He checks Renekton. You know why? Because maybe he wants to ult him. Then he checks the vision in the jungle. He's playing perfect. This is perfect. Well, actually, he does, you know, the mistake on the Ash ult. Obviously, he does have minor mistakes, but this is pretty much perfect. Like, honestly, perfect gameplay. Again, here, he can ult Renekton. I'm not sure why he's not. Yeah, there, come on, just ult him. Should be a kill. He doesn't have to exhaust him. I don't think he's gonna exhaust him. Yep, easy kill. There we go. Akali split pushing. Here, he has to be careful because a ribbon is very dangerous. So, this, when you play Ash, there is something you gotta be very careful about, which is actually two things. First thing is champions with a lot of slow resistance, so, or very fast champions, so like Olaf's ultimate, for example. Uh, um, who would be a good example? Like something that can cleanse you. Garen, oh, Garen, because Garen's first ability. Um, um, Mundo's ult gives a movement speed, so Mundo is very annoying too. Basically, champions that 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 cannot get slowed a lot. There's a lot of champions that can get slow resistances too and all of that. Um, and the second thing you need to be careful about is champions with a lot of dashes. Because Riven is the best example. You want to be extremely cautious of a Riven. Because Riven can get a QSS, a Quicksilver Enchant, which will give her 25% CC duration, including on your slows. Um, and she has a ton of dashes. She's gonna reach you. Oh my god, there's no way. Yeah, okay. Actually, beautifully played by the enemy. You saw that. I'm not talking about Varus. I'm talking about their support. Their support had a veal enchant perfectly in time. Well, after the ult, but she could not block the ult. So you can see he's not against bad players. He's actually against seemingly good players. That they're, they're playing well. Like, they're playing really well. Great invade by the enemies here. Very, very good. Ah, he didn't get it. Here's an opportunity to potentially kill the Riven together with the Akali. I think she won away, yep. See, Riven is so annoying. Oh, Riven does have QSS. I just talked about it. She indeed does. It's like such smart players. They're doing the ideal thing. They're, doing, they're playing optimally. It's super, super interesting and satisfying for me to watch this because everyone is just playing in a very optimal way. Don't know if you guys will notice that as well, but it's very satisfying for me to watch this. 
It's like if you're very good at chess and you're watching a game of chess pros, you know, you're watching like Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura playing against each other. You know, they're, they're playing so well and so optimally. It's super satisfying to watch, especially if you are very good at chess as well. So that, that's what I'm seeing right here, right? Like I'm a good chess player. I'm watching excellent chess gameplay right here. And as a, you know, I'm even a coach, like as a, as a, as a wild rift coach and very soon a fitness coach as well. It's very, very nice to see this. Because if I were coaching this player right now, he would be giving me a hell of a time to make it worth his money. <laughs> Perfect ult. Perfect Nami follow-up. He just gets that kill. I love the Nami follow-up too. Because even though it looked like a free kill for the Ash, it really wasn't. Because the Karma used Veal Enchant. So he could have ran away. But the Nami ultimate did not allow him to run away. It's funny how Varus can outsmite junglers. His his empowered arrow does so much damage. Look at Gume's positioning. He wanted to cut off the Riven, but then the, again, the enemy Karma is so good. She's playing so well. She cut off his path. And because she was right there, he couldn't kill the Riven. He has QSS for the ult. Doesn't have to use it because he just gets the kill. I'm sure he would have QSS if the Varus ulted a little bit earlier. If anyone is close, again, he can ult. Like, right here, I would ult the Karma. That's what I would have done. But he just kills her without even ulting him. And then, oh my god, he just all ins the Riven and gets that kill. She has QSS, which is an absolute mandatory enchantment in this game because besides the Ash, there's also a Nami, there's a Nasa Slow, and there's a Morgana Root and Stun. So, that's a lot of CC. And he's not afraid here. Because he has QSS. If the Renekton flashes on him, he's just gonna QSS the stun and he'll kill the Renekton. So I'm actually pretty sure he was baiting the Renekton right here. He actually wanted the Renekton to go in because he had QSS ready for him. By the way, guys, if you enjoyed these types of videos of me reviewing top one players, literally top one players in their in their respective positions, and make sure you give this video a like. Also, do let me know in the comments. And again, check out Gume. You can see this gameplay live on his Twitch amazing player amazing person just overall amazing experience there we go we are finally getting these ults i don't think this is gonna end up in a kill because she has qss but i do like his initiative to ult across the map but like it was it was a wasted ult i mean he i, I think he should have known uh, um this is very high level stuff but riven has qss so he should have known even in a 1v1 situation i'm ignoring the fact that the entire team was there because he couldn't have known but even even 1v1 I do not think Ash. It's not I don't think I'm I'm 100 certain that Akali would not have killed Riven. There's no way. She has QSS. They should rush the Baron here. He's 100 right. I'm not sure what his team is doing. 100 this is a Baron because the enemy jungler is topside. This is the easiest Baron ever. For some reason they're not Baroning. Why? Why are they not Baroning? I mean now it's late. Come on Baron. Okay now it's a little too late. But what the hell? Why did they not Baron? QSS? He doesn't, doesn't need the QSS it seems. Crazy how much damage he's doing to a Renekton as well. With two items by the way. Renekton is pretty tanky. He only has two items. Oh here he has to be very careful. That Riven will run his ass down. And he knows it. He knows it. Wow, that Nasus though is tanky. Oh my god. Oh my god, what is that Nasus? What the hell? What is that Nasus? You should see how much damage he was doing. <laughs> what? Okay, I guess Nasus. Chad Nasus. I'm really curious what the Nasher's Tooth will do. How will it affect his damage? Like, will we see a noticeable increase in damage with the Nasher's Tooth? Never built Nasher's Tooth on Ash before. Well, before Gume told me. After he told me about this build, I gave it a try. I played like five games of it. It went really well, somehow. I didn't really get why, but it did go well. Suppose he's also building it because of the lack of attack speed, because he doesn't have the lethal tempo. 
it, it just seems on a, on a surface level it seems a very weird item to build on, on ash in my opinion you know you you would want to go for runas ah the classic swerving arrow classic right like you, you would think you want to get either as much damage or as much attack speed not a nasher stood right that's what you would think but let's see again qss is ready Running out of the Varus ult, very nice. There's no reason to walk through the Varus ult. Take a ton of damage. This is not Dragon Soul, but why would they not take it? Because it's not necessarily about the Dragon. It's more about, yeah, trying to catch them and trying to avoid a bounty from them. Oh my god. He's exhausted, by the way. He killed two people in a 1v5 situation through exhaust. What? How? I know he's ahead, but what? He was exhausted and, and... Wow. That's all I can say, wow. But I really don't get it though, because Bloodthirster gives you physical fab and... Nasher's Tooth gives you magic damage per attack. So the physical fab does not work. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's working so well. I honestly cannot explain. Normally I can explain it all to you guys, but I honestly don't- I can't. I cannot explain it. So what does Nasher's Tooth give? Attack speed and on-hit magic damage, right? Why is it so much better than, than, than like a Blade of the Doom King? Maybe to diversify your damage? To do some magic damage, perhaps? C counter to armor? But now he's going for Mortal Reminder! It just, he has a little bit of everything, but he's doing a lot of damage. I, I, why? Why is he doing so much damage? It's very fascinating to watch this. Very, very fascinating. Because why is he doing so much damage? I mean, okay, obviously he's 11 on 1, but still. I have another gameplay for you guys as well, by the way, after this one. Renekton has a frozen heart. Beautiful build, actually. It's a very, very good item. That is why he was actually sort of struggling to kill the Renekton. It's that stupid frozen heart. Although it's only gonna work against Ash. It's not gonna do anything against Akali and uh, Nasus and against Morgana and against Nami. It's only a direct counter to Ash. He goes? Oh, there's no way he kills him. He's actually chunking down Renekton even through that frozen heart. And then, of course, the Bloodthirster heals him up. Hmm. Yeah, they can push. If the enemies contest, Nasus will end the game. If the enemies go to Nasus, the enemies will lose the fight. Yeah, just like that. They can just slowly take the Baron while keeping away the Riven. Even if the enemies steal this, Nasus will end the game now. Even Yeah, they stole it, but it should still be fine. Wait, what is Nasus doing? Wait, what is Nasus doing? Wait. Ah, actually... Oh my god! Never mind! This Nasus is walking them down! Oh! Baby! We can end the game? No, who is this Nasus? Who is this Nasus and why is he not ending the game? You can end in top. Hello! You can end in top lane, buddy! What, what is he doing? He can end the game! We're past 16 minutes. There is no base shield. Why are you not ending the game, man? I think he he's either having too much fun and just simply does not want to end the game, or he genuinely did not notice that he could end the game right there. Nasus dying here is bad. This is bad, because even though he took an inhib, this is their main carry. I would say this Nasus is even more important than the Ash. And the Elder Dragon is up. It's gonna be a 4v5 on the, at the Elder Dragon. Really bad. Again, this ult just... I don't even think Riven needed to use ma uh, the QSS right there. He shouldn't be ulting Riven. He should be ulting, you know, the Lucian. Yeah, I mean, this was kinda wasted, I guess. It's not the, Like, right here. Imagine an ulti on the Lucian. That would have been insane. 
Nash's Tooth doesn't even doesn't even give um, cooldown reduction. I got the Trinity Force. The Trinity Force is a very good item, Nash. I've built it before too. But like, why would he not build a Black Cleave or something? Okay, damage, damage, damage. Oh my god, he shreds them. Look at that. Oh man. Wow. Ridiculous damage. Are they just gonna run down the game and end it? I don't know if they can. The enemy should have enough wave clear. Lucian can just ult. Oh, never mind, I guess the game is just over. So let's take a look at how much damage he did and everything like that. Oh, he doesn't show it. Okay, let's just move on to the next game then. Because I have another one. Yeah, here you can see he is... Right here he's the number 5 player on the leaderboard. Um, you know, obviously the top 1 ADC. And he's playing Ash again. You can see his border. It's a sovereign border, of course. Um, so let's move on to the gameplay. I just wanted... Oh, he's... Wait, he's again starting? Give me a second. Oh, he's again starting all over. How did I not see that in the main screen? If obviously we do not know who's starting all over. This is the the back to back to back to back or whatever you want to say. Top one player in NA. Also has a Twitch starting all over. So Gume is playing against starting. Starting was the Morgana. Oh, now it gets interesting. But I do want to say this is an older gameplay. I believe this is before the new items. But the build is still very much relevant. Because it's the same this is the exact same build. I checked. This is the exact same build. Exact same runes. Everything is exactly the same. I would love a matchup like this against a Kaisa and an Illusion. When I play Ash, I love playing against those lower range champions. Because you can bully the hell out of them. I mean, look at this. He is destroying them. Exhaust? Bit of a late exhaust. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, a bit of a late exhaust. He could have exhausted a bit earlier. And I do think, I do think they would have killed that Kai'Sa a lot more easily if he exhausted. Just a tad bit faster. A little late with it, but it's fine. They got two kills. Yeah, it's fine. Especially because the Zyra got away without dying. Okay, point is second ability. Interesting how we start, started with his first ability, by the way. I actually always start with second ability, just to poke. But I actually saw an opportunity to start with first ability, proc that Kraken Slayer and do a whole lot of damage. Which ended up winning them the fight, by the way. So I suppose sometimes you want to start with first ability on Ash instead of the second ability. Because he showed a good example of why it can be a very viable strategy to do so. Oh, guys, please. I am competing with my second channel. So let's give these videos some likes as well. And let's not give the second channel any more likes. I've overdone the second channel. I do not want any more likes on the second channel, guys. Give them to this channel. This channel is in desperate need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely serious. This channel is actually performing worse because of the second channel. It's so hilarious. I mean, it's it's hilarious. It's really funny. But for me, it's it's a win-win, right? Like, if you guys have nice content, if you guys are happy, I am happy. That's what it's all about for me. Um, honestly, you know what's funny? <laughs> I spend more time coaching Wild Rift players than making content for my YouTube channel. Um... It's ridiculous how many people I coach. It's actually ridiculous how busy it got. I coach like an average of like three people a day. Three people every day is what I coach. There are even some days where I, where I coach like six, seven people on a single day. And I love every little bit of it. Um, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous how much these people are improving as well for, from the coaching sessions. Like, I remember all the way in the beginning, I had to build my confidence a little bit to coach people. But I did it once with a friend. And he told me, you're really good at this. So then I actually tried to do paid coaching. And it went so well that I started actually doing it, right? Like, you guys remember the Patreon times? Um, and now it's it's funny. Like, it could be a full-time thing for me to coach Wild Rift players. Who would have guessed, right? Like, who would have guessed something like this is, is actually, you know, pe people have interest in it enough. But it works. And it's fun. Like, the, basically, the way it goes is exactly what I'm doing with Gume right here. I'm actually kind of having a coaching session right now. Of course, he's not here. He's not asking me questions. And he is the best ADC pretty much in the entire West. Uh, but besides that, those are details. 
I'm essentially talking about his mistakes and the good things he's doing and analyzing it for him. Of course, when you when I'm coaching you, you know, the average Joe or even the challenger Joe, who's not even close to being as good as Gume, you're going to be making a whole lot more mistakes. And I'll notice all of them because besides coaching, I have casted, I've cast Wild Rift Worlds. I've been an analyst for Wild Rift Worlds. You know, I've seen the best of the best play. And when I say the best, I mean the best. Chinese best. Because the Chinese are even on another level. He actually tried to flash out of the Karma second ability, I think. But he failed. Or he just wanted to get close. No way. Oh my god. Let's go back. Look at what he did. Oh my baby. Okay, he gets engaged, he gets ulted, and he knows if he walks into that ult, he's dead. So he walks into the bush, lets the Twisted Fate stun. Oh my god. Oh my baby, what is that? Oh, wow. That is sick. That's sick. Aurelius is molding right now. He's like, why did he not die? How is that possible? He's hacking. What the hell? I'm baffled. This is ridiculous. How did he... How, did he, how the hell did he survive an Aurelia engage like that? That is genuinely ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous. Wow. As another thing I've noticed that, that Gume doesn't doesn't ever really do, he never uses his third ability to, to proc wards. There was a ward in that bush to the left to him. Like, you see that bush to the left, the small bush? There was a ward there earlier on, and he had a third ability. He either did not notice it, or he just didn't care, and didn't use his third ability. Because Ash's third ability, in case you don't know, gives you true vision. So it reveals invisible enemy, it reveals everything including yellow wards so oh my god that's just it's just such a dirty combo i mean normally you would not get a kill like that but because he's playing with azira he's taking those those he's he's going for those ult and instead of ganking other lanes he is ganking his lane now his own lane with his ult because he knows it's just easy peasy kills with the zyra since this zyra is showcasing very high skill Nah, the Morgana got it. This game is ridiculous. How did they lose it to the Morgana? Morgana's pool took it. The jungler smited it down to like 20 HP and then starting just got the dragon. That is so funny. Yeah, so Gume also goes for Sheen first. Sheen is the strongest component of Trinity Force. You pretty much exclusively want to be building Sheen first on almost anything you play, except for Darius. On Darius, you would want to go Phage first, because Phage gives you movement speed, which is a more important stat than the bonus damage that the Sheen gives for, the, for Darius, because Darius does already have so much damage, so it's mostly about sticking to the enemy. Like right here again, why, does he, why is he not going to use his third ability into that bush? Okay, he ults. Classic. Like, why is he not using his third ability into that bush to get the vision, right? That would be my question to Gume. I, like, I think it would be good, because you take the ward, and then before you're back to your lane, you'll have your third ability again. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like he has to do that. Wow, that is a huge engage by the Camille. Huge engage. Wow. This is this is such high skill gameplay. It's honestly enter like super entertaining for me. I'm loving making this. I'm gonna tell Gume to send me more. Uh, but the problem is I have so many ADC videos already, and he's of course a main ADC. I need to message Lebmont and starting. These like Lebmont starting Gume. These guys are ridiculously good, and we need more of that. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me. I mean, I think you do agree with me, and I think I think this is really good content for you guys too. And of course, it's pr it promotes these amazing content creators too. So it's a win, win, win. Everyone wins. I got nice entertainment while making the video. Instead of watching my own stupid gameplay, the creators get promotion. You guys get good content. Everyone is winning. There is no loss. 
Look at all the pressure on every lane. Look at all the vision they have. This game is just so is going so well for the blue side. So so well. Starting. Are you really that greedy? Is he? Don't give him that blue buff. Oh, okay, never mind. He smiled at he. Is he gonna flash? Flash to dodge it. There we go. He waits for his flash. Top tier gameplay. He flashed only when starting used his first ability and then he just dodged the flash. He could have flashed through it as well. You'll dodge it that way too. That's of course taking unnecessary risk. He just sidestepped it with his flash. I mean, this guy is just dead. There's no chance. I want to say the Zyra support is very good. She's playing very, very good. Everyone is playing good. Only Yone is not playing good, but Yone is master, so you cannot expect much from him in a game filled with sovereigns and challenges. Nah, this is ridiculous. But like, the Zyra is very strong. Such a toxic comp for Irelia to, to play against. Everyone counters Irelia in this game. Everyone. Literally everyone. She cannot do anything in this game. Uh, we haven't seen any Fiora action though. She's been, she's just been killing that Yone over and over again. Which is nothing special because the Yone is just a master player. Nothing wrong with being master, but again, in a sovereign game, it's like comparing, uh, comparing uh, Mertesacker to Ronaldo. You know what I mean? Mertesacker may be a nice football player if he plays with like big fat people, but if he's up against some actual pros, you know that, that they're gonna destroy him. So essentially, being Mertesacker is not a problem, but and and it's it's actually even good. You're way above average, but you know, you're not going to be able to play against Ronaldo and Messi, right? Which is Gume starting, etc, etc. Nice analogy, by the way. <laughs> what the hell am I even talking about? Well, that's not good. They actually have to be careful now. They're losing turrets to split pushing. I don't think Yone... She blocked it. Fiora blocked it. Yeah, I mean, look at that. This poor Yone. She just can't do anything against this Fiora. Gume has to be careful. Although he does have uh, exhaust, so he'll be fine. The enemies are gonna get uh, Dragon, aren't they? Never mind. Morgana's dead. He's not gonna catch him. I don't know why he's wasting time. I think he thought the F would help him. That's why he was chasing him. Of the ward. Nice. There we go. You see, like, it reveals wards. He can get a Nashor's Tooth, which is a massive power spike, but... Yeah, this is a lost dragon. You're not gonna steal it. He stole it. He stole it. He stole it. He did steal it. He did steal it. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm just wrong. I, I am just wrong. What the hell? I guess that's karma, right? Not karma the champion, but actual karma. Because starting got it luckily as well with the second ability. And now we got a lucky steal from Gume too. It's actually pretty funny. It's, it's, it's like karma struck starting. He leaves the blue buff for his teammates. That means he's respecting his teammates. Even though he's like, he has 11, he has nearly 12k gold. He's giving blue buffs to his team. Uh, it's not the ideal thing, but I suppose he's just respecting his teammates. Even a 0-6 Twisted Fate. He just gave a blue buff to a 0 60 who just died. So I think he should not have done that. I think he should have just taken it himself. I don't think he wanted to give it to TF though. I think he wanted to give it to... Uh, to the... to the uh, What is that champion called? To the Zyra. He has... Oh, he doesn't have ult. He ulted earlier. Great exhaust. Also great disengage, because he would have died from that Morgana, first ability. On my way. They actually have to be careful. Morgana can rush the dragon, uh, the Baron. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're doing. That, so, he noticed that as well. Yeah, they're gonna get Baron. I mean... Never mind, they're not gonna get anything. Kill him first, and get the Baron. Nice. And now it should be game over. I think they should be able to just end the game. Although again, this Fiora is very annoying because she has a free lane and she just keeps pushing both. 
Old Sphere, the question is, is she gonna block it with Rypost? I don't think she will. Yeah, that's too much. But I don't... Zyra needs to be very careful. I don't think Zyra can kill Fiora. Wait, Fiora doesn't have ult? I mean, if Fiora doesn't have ult, then yeah, sure, she will kill her. But even without Fiora ult, she almost died. I think the enemies can actually defend this. Because we're, we're not 16 minutes into the game, so there's going to be a base shield. And you can also see how he doesn't waste a single second. This is another thing that I talk about a lot during my coaching sessions. Backport immediately when you're done doing whatever you wanted to do. Whether it's taking the jungle, pushing the wave, taking the enemy turret. You can see Gume takes it to a whole other level. He even lets the minions finish the turret, right? He, he, he just... He doesn't waste a single second. He even gains a second. He doesn't take the turret himself. He lets the minions do it. So then he goes back and he's right back into the game very, very quickly. This is super efficient gameplay and will give you a very high amount of gold per minute. You play like this, that's how you get a high amount of gold per minute. He's gonna have ult soon. The ult cooldown is not the lowest um, with this build. I've noticed that as well. You know, the Trinity Force is nice. They have to be careful of Fiora. I mean... Okay, Twisted Fate went back. That's good. Although, Twisted Fate will get 1v1 by Fiora, but hopefully... Hopefully they don't get 1v2'd, right? That's what I'm scared of. Gonna end the game? Ah, starting got you, bro. He got your ass. You cannot mess with starting like that. You cannot mess with starting like that, guys. He's gonna get your ass. That was way too greedy from Gume. Normally it would work, but you're against starting, buddy. That doesn't work against starting. He's gonna catch you. Fiora is actually struggling against the two. It's pretty funny. I thought she would destroy TF and Yone. But it seems like it was just a little bit too overwhelming for the Fiora. Yeah, you're dead. Come on, Kaisa. You got this. Yeah. Why am I rooting for the Kaisa, by the way? We're, yeah, why the hell am I rooting for Kaisa? Yeah, Kaisa needs to run away. Oh, that's not gonna kill the Kaisa. I mean, he's trying to aim it, but it's not gonna kill her. Yeah, come on. I mean, come on. Right? It's, it's, it's not gonna kill her anyways. You're not playing AP Ash or Support Ash. Even if you hit that, that would have been cool. You know, it would have been cool. But, come on, man. We, 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 we both know it would not have killed her. He's trying to cheese starting again, but starting has none of it. He, like, starting knows. He just knows. You're not, this is not the average player. He knows. He knows you're trying to cheese him. Beautiful positioning. Oh my god. The funny thing is, if Gume didn't get that lucky still second, this would have been Dragon Soul for the enemy team. So actually, that supposed lucky steal kind of game saving for them. He waited for the black shield to run out and got the kill on starting. Very nice patience. So, you know, normally what any normal Ash player would do, he would immediately go on Morgana, but Morgana would have probably survived or at least put up a good fight because of the black shield. But when the black shield runs out, she's gonna get slowed by Ash's basic attacks and she cannot do anything. They're forced to go back to take care of the Fiora as well because they cannot leave the Yone alone with the Fiora. Fiora's just gonna end the game. Like, she's actually gonna end the game. It's a little bit annoying because he does have to take care of that Fiora. Leaving that Yone alone is too risky. Like, imagine if Fiora is in a bush. She's just gonna kill Yone. No idea what Fiora is doing. Fiora should be looking for a kill on that Yone. 100%. Also, no idea where Irelia's QSS is. Uh, why does she not have QSS? Yeah, I mean, this game is over. We have Irelia's dead. Pressure in three lanes with the Baron. Long range champions like Zyra, TF, and, and Ash. There is. No way in hell the enemies are defending this. Simply no way. At all. Yeah, you're dead. I mean, this game is over. I can guarantee you this is the end. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, like right now. This is just gonna end. They cannot defend this. There's no way. I mean, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. So let's take a look at how much damage he did and everything like that. Oh, he doesn't show it. It's fine. Thank you all very much for watching. Um, check out the content creator, Gume. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you all 
in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.